This video is about modulus functions. A modulus is the value of a number without paying any attention to what its sign is. So the modulus of minus 3, so you put these two lines around it, two straight lines on either side, and that means the modulus, the modulus of minus 3 is just plus 3. So the value of it without paying any attention to its sign. And the modulus of a positive 3 is also 3. So it takes no consideration of its sign. It's just what is the value of that number? What is its distance away from 0? So the modulus of minus 7 is 7. The modulus of minus 9 is 9, and so on. On a calculator, you should be able to find an ABS button. That means absolute value, and it means the same thing as modulus. So you might have to press shift to find it, depending on what calculator you've got. And you can just try typing some numbers in there. If you type in minus 5, you should get out 5. Because the modulus of minus 5, the absolute value of minus 5, is 5. I've got two different functions here. We've got f of x is the modulus of x plus 2 and we've got g of x is the modulus of x plus 2. So we're going to have a look at these different functions. So f of negative 4, so we're going to substitute negative 4 in to f, so that will be the modulus of negative 4 plus 2. So the modulus of negative 4 is 4, so we've got 4 plus 2, which is 6. f of 4, so that is the modulus of 4 plus 2. The modulus of 4 is still 4. 4 plus 2 is 6 as well. So if you put 4 or minus 4 in it's going to give you the same thing because the modulus of minus 4 and the modulus of 4 is the same. They're both 4. g of minus 5. So g of minus 5 is the modulus of minus 5 plus 2. Minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. So the modulus of minus 3, which is just 3. And g of 5, finally, g of 5 is the modulus of 5 plus 2, which is the modulus of 7, which is just 7. Okay, now we're going to look at the graphs of modulus functions. So we're going to sketch some graphs, we're going to sketch, sketch the original graphs, and we're going to sketch the modulus graphs, and we're going to have a look at what happens when we're plotting a modulus graph. So firstly, let's look at the original graph. So that would be y equals 2x plus 1. And let's see where it crosses the axes. So it's going to cross x when y equals 0 and cross y when x equals 0. So it crosses y, crosses y when x equals 0. And that's the y-intercept, so it will cross y at 1. And it crosses x when y equals 0. So that would be 0 equals 2x plus 1. Take away 1 from both sides and divide by 2. So it's going to cross the x-axis at minus a half. And it's going to cross the y-axis at 1. So it looks like that. So we've got the original graph plotted, and now we're going to look at the modulus. So for the modulus function, we cannot get out a negative at all. We cannot get a negative answer. So everything below the x-axis can't be there. So what's going to happen to it? If you've got a negative 3, it's going to turn into a positive 3. If you've got a negative 5, it will turn into a positive 5. So it's going to reflect off of the x-axis. So this part of the graph here is going to stay exactly the same.
So the positive part of the graph stays the same, but the negative part, what goes below the x-axis, is going to reflect back. So the modulus graph is always going to stay positive. Okay, let's look at the second graph here. So we'll look at the original first. So y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. So it crosses y crosses y when x equals 0. So that would be y equals 0 squared plus 3 zeros, which is 0 minus 10. So it crosses y at minus 10, and it crosses the x when y equals 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. So we're going to factorise it. What multiplies to make a negative 10 and adds to make a positive 3? That would be 5, positive 5, negative 2. So that means it crosses at negative 5 and positive 2. So negative 5, positive 2, and not to scale at all, minus 10 here. So I'll try and draw it. <laughs> well, that's the best I can do. So the original graph is a quadratic shaped like this. The modulus graph is going to be the same in the two positive areas. But it's going to reflect back in the negative area. So it formed this shape, the negative 10. The modulus of negative 10 is positive 10. So it's going to make this W type shape. OK, here's two questions. Pause the video, give them a go. Um, so sketch the original graph, sketch your modulus graph, and mark on where it crosses the x and where it crosses the y axis. OK, so the first one we've got, the original graph is y equals x minus 2. So it crosses y when x equals 0. So that would be y equals minus 2. And it crosses x when y equals 0. So 0 equals x minus 2. So x is 2. So it crosses y at minus 2 and crosses x at 2. And we've got a straight line graph. So something like that. The modulus of it, again, is going to stay the same in the positive area. But in the negative area, it's going to reflect back so this negative 2, the modulus of negative 2, is going to be positive 2. So it's going to reflect back up here and cross at positive 2 instead. OK, so we've got a quadratic here. So y equals x squared plus x minus 6 is the original graph. It crosses x when y is 0 and crosses y when x is 0. So when x equals 0, y equals negative 6. And it crosses x when y equals 0. So 0 equals x squared plus x minus 6. So we're going to factorise it. What multiplies to make negative 6 and adds to make a positive 1? We'll have positive 3 and a negative 2, plus 3 and minus 2. So that means it crosses x at minus 3 and at 2. So we've got minus 3, 2, and crosses y at minus 6. So the original graph looks something like that. The modulus of it, so the two positive bits 
are going to stay the same. If you get a positive answer, the modulus of it is itself. But this negative 6 here, the modulus of negative 6 is a positive 6. And the whole negative part of the graph is going to reflect back over the x-axis. Now we're going to look at solving equations with the modulus sign. So here we've got the modulus of 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. So what values of x give make the modulus of 2x plus 1 equal to 5? There's actually two equations we're solving here because to get an answer of 5 out, to get an answer of 5, we could have 2x plus 1 equals 5. Or what would also give us an answer of 5 was if 2x plus 1 was equal to minus 5. So if this inside the modulus was 5, we'll get an answer of 5. But if it was negative 5, we'd also get an answer of 5. So there's actually two equations we're solving here. We've got 2x plus 1 equals 5 and 2x plus 1 equals a negative 5. So if we solve both of those, we'll get two answers of what would give us 5. So if we take one from both sides here, that's 2x equals 4. And then divide both sides by 2, x is 2. And we can check that that gives 5. Two twos are 4, plus 1 is 5, the modulus of 5 is 5. 2x plus 1 equals minus 5. So taking 1 away from both sides, 2x equals minus 6, half in both sides, x equals minus 3 or a negative 3. Again, we can check that. So 2 negative 3s, negative 6, plus 1 negative 5 and the modulus of negative 5 is 5. So the second question is the same thing. So there's two equations to solve. We want to know where if the bit inside the modulus sign, we want to know where it's equal to 15, but we also want to know where it's equal to minus 15 because the modulus of minus 15 will be just 15. So that means x could be 16, or x could be minus 14. So both of those will make the modulus of x minus 1 equal to 15. The third question here is trickier. Um, it's harder, it's not impossible to use linear equations, but you'd have to draw the graphs to find out which, which parts of the line intersect. There is an easier way of doing it. To get rid of modular signs, we can square both sides. So we can get rid of the modulus by squaring everything. So 2x minus 1 squared equals x plus 2 squared. So we're going to expand both sets of brackets and simplify it. And then we should have an equation we can solve. So we've got 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So 1 times 1 is 1 x times x is x squared, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 twos are 4. So we've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So let's make it equal to 0. So minus x squared from both sides, 3x squared, minus 4x from both sides, minus 8x and minus 4 from both sides, minus 3. So we've got 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals 0. So we're going to factorise that, 3x in one bracket, 
x in the other bracket, we're going to have 3 and 1. The only thing that multiplies to make 3 is 3 and 1. And we want minus 9 plus 1. So x is minus 1 third, or x is 3. Okay, so here's another set of questions. Pause the video, give them a go. So the first one, we've got the modulus of 3x minus 1 equals 7. So we want to know where the bit inside the mod sign is equal to 7 and where it's equal to minus 7. So they will both give us an answer. So 3x minus 1 equals 7 and 3x minus 1 equals minus 7. So if we plus 1 to both sides and then divide by 3, so 3x equals 8, x equals 8 thirds, and 3x equals minus 6, x equals minus 2. Same thing for the second one. So the modulus of x plus 5 equals 11. So we want to know where the bit inside the mod, x plus 5, is equal to 11, but also where it's equal to minus 11 because they will both give us an answer of 11 so we need to minus 5 from both sides this time so x equals 6 and x equals minus 16 and the third one we're going to square both sides this time so we're going to have 2x minus 3 squared equals x minus 1 squared. So if we expand these brackets, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 3 is minus 6x. Minus 3 times 2x is minus 6x. And minus 3 times minus 3, negative times a negative, is a positive, so positive 9. x times x is x squared. x times minus 1 minus x, minus 1 times x is minus x, and negative times a negative again is a positive, so negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Now it's a quadratic, so we're going to make it equal to 0. Uh, actually, to simplify first, so 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now we're going to make it equal to 0, so minus x from both sides, 3x squared. Uh, add 2x to both sides, minus 10x, and take 1 from both sides, plus 8 equals 0. We're going to factorise it. So 3x in one bracket, x in the other. We're going to have 4 and 2. So we want two negatives, so 4 and 2, so that gives us x equals 4 thirds and x equals 2. Again, you can check these answers by substituting them back in and making sure that the left side equals the right side.